So I wanted to talk about how to price your artwork, and it's a question that I get a lot, and I think there's some misconceptions uh, um, or misunderstandings. Number one is galleries are absolutely the number one um, determinant of what your price should be. So, for instance, if you take a beautiful landscape, or let's say a, a pretty good landscape that you've painted, and you take it to you know, a small town gallery and they are very happy to hang your painting and they may only be able to put a price on it in the small town gallery of, you know, say $800 um, or, or whatever, $300. And then that same uh, painting you could, if you were to get, uh, put it in a prestigious gallery in New York, you know, catering to the very high end of the market, you know, you, you could get, you know, $50,000 for that same painting. And so it absolutely depends on what gallery you're, gallery you're in or what agent represents you or somebody that can sort of like, uh, you know, um, speak about your reputation and it's, it's somebody that they can trust. Now, one of the things you have to be careful of is there's a lot of galleries out there that don't really move art. And some of them will be happy to hang your paintings, but they don't sell any paintings. And, and maybe they don't even know how to paintings or how to sell paintings. And, and the reason for that is because people open galleries for a lot of reasons. Uh, number one, it could be a spouse who, who just wants to have a, you know, a little business of their own. And so they, you know, open a gallery because it's a lot of fun, but they really don't know how to run a gallery. And maybe there's always paintings on the wall, but they tend to be the same paintings because the, the and they may put big prices on those paintings, but they just don't sell them. Um, then there's uh, galleries that do move art, and those are the galleries that, um, you know, tend to be, you know, have a long reputation or, or they have some connection to the community where people trust them and, and everything else. So you just, and by the way, get, running galleries is very, very difficult. It's an it's a extremely um, hard way to, um, you know, uh, extremely tough business to be in and and, and uh, very few of them survive I mean I mean the ones that that are here for the long term and aren't just a you know somebody's whim project that's never going to actually turn a profit or whatever so let me just go through a few of these um, uh, points that I want to make and number one is when you start off painting it's uh, absolutely uh, uh, critical that you have a, a consistent uh, price structure or you know you can't charge uh, two hundred dollars for one person and then two thousand to another because you know if, if it, it, you have to sort of establish across the, your broad work what your uh, price fee structure is and everybody that buys your work is, is going to be very keyed in on that they're going to want to know what your work sells for or they're going to want to know what it sold for in the past and in general the market sees price as you know, sort of your reputation. So the higher prices you can, you can command, the, the, the greater your reputation. Now, sometimes there might be somebody that sells them for a thousand, but he's selling one every two weeks. And then there could be another person that sells their paintings for, uh, you know, for t 10 times that, but they only produce uh, 10 times or one tenth the number of paintings. So it really depends on a lot of things, but the public doesn't see all that. They just look at your price and they see what you command, and that's kind of the respect that they give you in terms of you know the market and, and what your painting sells for. So speaking about your work itself, keep in mind that your subject matter, your lighting, your composition, those things that appeal to um, you know to the people that would buy your paintings is is um, very very important and is actually more important than how well you paint. So a lot of artists think, well, if I can really really paint well, that my work deserves a certain price. But a huge part of that is the subject matter. So if you can go out and find a, you know, a landscape, and as, you know, even if you're working from uh, photographs, and you, find a, um, uh, you, fi you have a beautiful landscape photograph that's um, just unbelievable. I mean, you're, you're all the way there almost. The only thing you have left to do is paint it. And, and so whenever, when I used to paint a portrait, I, I, I used to always uh, feel like if I had a great source photo that I was done. It was just a matter of executing it. So the, the, your source material is critically important and that's a big part of what determines your price. So never forget that. That means putting a lot of effort into painting your masterpieces or being out, out in the field to get source material or whatever it is. So, so that's really, really uh, important. Now, when you start uh, painting, you're gonna produce a body of work and um, you really only want the public 
to see your very best work because your your le lower quality work will um, lower the public's perception of you know where you are as an artist. So if you only show them your very best paintings, that's far better because then that will be sort of your body of work as opposed to including all your um, early work that may, be not be, that may be not as good and then that'll be seen as you know sort of bringing your average down so to speak. So I would highly recommend only showing your best work. Then the next thing is um, as you're creating this body of work, because you can't just approach a gallery or an agent with you know three or four paintings you've got to have at least 10 or maybe even 15. So only show them those best paintings. Now, keep in mind that you're going to have a lot of paintings that, that you may not want to sell uh, to, to, uh, through the galleries. And, and in the early days, you're going to have a lot of friends and family that are asking for paintings. And there's nothing in the world wrong with giving out those paintings that are you know, subpar or maybe aren't your best work or selling those paintings to friends and family. Just make it clear to those friends and family that those aren't your uh, prices at all, that they don't have anything to do with your fee structure or the prices that you command, that they are, th these are paintings that you're either giving away or, giving, or selling to them at a greatly reduced price. And that way, those prices will not be seen as, as sort of, uh, you know, where you are uh, in your prices or, or won't affect your uh, fee structure going forward. And, um, and they should know that, and if anybody asks to see their work, you say, look, this was a special price for a friend or family. Um, but then as you accumulate your masterpieces, don't sell those to friends and family, but keep those and use those to, uh, when you approach the gallery, and then your, your uh, prices will be whatever the, the gallery decides they should be, and that's something you can negotiate with them. But you don't have to include all this mediocre work or maybe your early work that's not up to par and you can uh, happily uh, give that away to friends and family and just let them know the price is, is, is not official, so to speak. Another thing to keep in mind is that the artwork that your work is, is hanging next to will affect the uh, public's perception of what you should be uh, charging for your uh, painting. So in other words, if you're hanging your paintings and everybody around you is, is charging 10 times more than you, the, than you do, then that will refl reflect very well on your work because people will look at that and say, boy, this works greater than even this very expensive stuff. But on the other hand, if you're hanging your work and there are other artists around you that are charging a lot less and maybe their work's even not as, as, as good as yours, um, the, the public will look at your work as being overpriced. So that's something to think about. Another important thing to consider is when you're painting your paintings, I would, uh, if you're doing oil paintings on canvases, um, then I would highly recommend always painting on linen canvas instead of cotton canvas because cotton is seen as student grade typically and linen is seen as, as a higher grade and that will um, you know, greatly affect uh, possibly the perception of your work. You should also use uh, heavy duty stretcher strips in any of the medium canvas sizes or larger. So if you're doing a, you know, even like a, a 24 inch uh, canvas, you know, in some dimension, then I would definitely use heavy duty stretcher strips and that will give your work, a, you know, a more of an impact than, than on some flimsy lightweight stretcher strips. And then one more thing is to possibly purchase a uh, frame uh, for two or three of your paintings and let that be a very uh, beautiful frame that's a high end frame, not, not something inexpensive and that might cost you some money. You might you know, look in antique stores and look for something that's old that you can fix up or come by it some other way. But uh, even finding an old beautiful frame and then painting the painting to fit that frame uh, because frames can be very expensive. Um, but have a couple of your paintings in frames and, and uh, that will uh, make everybody uh, see your work um, in that light. And it really can make a difference to have a one or two in a beautiful, beautiful, expensive frame. Another thing to consider when you're trying to set the price of your painting is that whenever you, um, you can raise your prices, but you really don't want to ever lower them because you want to always be seeing as an artist who's, uh, maybe his prices are low or, you know, get them wh while you can because uh, their prices are just going up and up. Or, but if your prices uh, start going down, that really, uh, you know, the people who have already bought your work are going to feel bad about it. And so it's something you really want to try to avoid doing. Um, so really uh, want to consider before you raise your prices uh, that, that you probably shouldn't come down from those prices. Now, um, one other thing to consider, though, 
is that if you paint, um, if you raise your prices by, uh, um, or double your prices, say, then you can expect maybe your demand to cut by 50%, but you'll still end up making the same amount of money. So it's one of those things that you have to uh, balance and, you know, make sure you're not raising your prices too much. But on the other hand, um, you know, if you do raise them, you don't have to paint as many paintings to make the same amount of money. So um, that's about all I have on how to set the prices of your painting. Um, I could try to, you know, show you a painting and say what it's worth, but those other variables are just so great that it really depends much more on the galleries that, that, that you can get to, to hang your work and, and everything else. So thank you guys so much for watching, and don't uh, forget to go check out my art supply company if you haven't already, GenevaFineArt.com, uh, and where we sell easels and paint that doesn't have uh, fumes and uh, all kinds of things for artists, including our palettes, which are going to be back in stock very, very soon, and everything else. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.